Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. This is a FTP Sports Production. I'm Joe Winkle. We are here at John Teal Gymnasium for the Thanksgiving tournament as we are getting things underway with game number one. We're getting a pretty hefty quick start here is the game number one of the day between East Peoria, the East Peoria Raiders and the Moline Maroons. I'd like to welcome my broadcast partner Tanner Roa. Tanner, we got a long day ahead of us here at the uh, Galesburg Holiday Tournament. Yeah, it should be a long day and uh, lots of good basketball. Obviously, we have a good matchup at hand here today as Moline coming off a dramatic win, to say the least, and East Peoria looks like a very athletic team out there, and it'll be a good matchup. Yeah, uh, Moline uh, the other night defeated Chicago Englewood on a last-second shot by Drew Owens. We're going to get the starting lineups first. We're going to get them for... Well, we'll get him for Moline right now. At guard number three, that's uh, Drew Owens. Also at guard number 20, that's Jed Wood. Also, or at forward, a 6'7", senior number 30, Josh Larson. Also at forward, number 33, Derek Stabler. And the man in the middle is Brandon Weiss for the Moline Maroons. For East Peoria. Uh, at guard is number three, Ryan Slusher. Also at guard is number 10, Sean Mulhorn. And the forwards, number 22, Michael Thompson. Number 14, Carson Buckley. And also number 30, Mitch Nem. The Moline Maroons are head coached by first-year head coach Jeff Schimmel and assisted by Dave Fowler. And the East Peoria Raiders are head coached by Matt Wright, assisted by Dave Brown, Brian Gognium, Josh Johnson, and Doug Martin. We're about to get things underway. Game number one of the uh, Friday edition of the Galesburg Holiday Tournament. And here we go as Moline wins the tip. Moline, white jerseys, maroon lettering. East Peoria, dark red jerseys and white lettering. Moline going from left to right, East Peoria right to left. Kicked into the near corner now as they work it back around. That's number 20, Jed Wood. Back up top to Owens. Owens kicks it into the near corner. Worked it around, back up to Owens. Getting into the middle now, works it back out. Shot from the corner is no good. Rebound grabbed there by Vice. Kick back out, shot from three, got it. That is number 20, Jed Wood. And Moline gets the first points of the game. East Peoria started out there in a little 3-2 zone and they covered well, but Moline just found the hole and got a three there. Moline, now they're gonna run 10 seconds right off the bat on uh, East Peoria. Uh, Sean Mulhorn and number 22, uh, Michael Thompson, were just passing the ball back in their own backcourt. And Moline will run that 1 2 2 zone to death. And they'll run it until you want to commit death, pretty much. And then here's Owens in the corner for three. Way off the mark there, off the backboard. Rebound grab there by Gnem. Bringing it up now is Mulhorn for East Peoria. But like I said, they'll run this, they're back in that 1 2 2 zone. And off makes, they'll pick it up at half court and try to do what they did in the first possession and get a turnover right off the bat. Another turnover, three in the key or three in the lane on Carson Buckley, and it's going the other way. So right off the bat, East Peoria with two turnovers. Yeah, and those are just mental mistakes right there for the Knights. And East Peoria really needs to pick it up on the offensive end a little bit. Now here we go, working the back around. Far side, that's Wood. Nice skip pass there for Owens in the corner. Owens drives the lane over to Vice. Now Vice law lost the handle, and up court now comes East Peoria. Six and a half to go first quarter here at the John Teal Gymnasium. This is the Galesburg Thanksgiving Tournament. Game number one of the Friday edition. Moline won their first game against Englewood on a last second three by Drew Owens. East Peoria lost the other day to Galesburg. And now things are getting set up. Sean Mulhorn, Mulhern for the East Peoria Raiders. See if East Peoria can get a little offense rolling here now off the two turnovers as they take the three, but it's off the mark. And nice look there by Nem. Got the ball working around. They got an open look. They're going to be looking for shots like that again. Here's Wood for three. Off the mark. Rebound grab there by Carson Buckley for East Peoria. And up the floor now, Mulhern. Jed Wood, that was a second attempt at three, misses it. He still has the only points of the game, 5.45 to go first quarter. Nice little skip pass in the corner. Up top, shot from three. No good, rebound grab there. Back up top. Now they kick it into the corner. That three was missed by Slusher. Driving the lane is Mulhern, puts it up, rolls in, and East Peoria is on the board with a two-pointer by Mulhern in the paint. And each team's had their looks from three early. It'll be interesting to see if they can each get out on the perimeter and guard. 
Now they work it around. Nice little pass into the paint from Jed Wood to number 30. That is Josh Larson, and Larson gets his first points of the game. And now Moline picking that 1-2-2 zone up all the way at three-quarters court, trying to trap Mulhorn there as Mulhorn now gets it back up, swinging on the near side, Slusher. Working it back down, Thompson. Back up top, Mulhorn. Shot from three is up. Off the mark. Rebound grab there by Vice. Just not falling early here for East Peoria. And they have the shots, definitely. Nice, nice steal there by uh, Thompson down low. Now Mulhorn brings it across half court. Mulhorn working. To, oh, tipped by Owens. No, oh, nice play there by the senior Owens to get the steal and coming out of bounds. He throws it off of. I want to say he threw that off of Slusher or Thompson. I couldn't tell which one it was. Yeah, that's a very heads-up play there by uh, Tanner Logan checks in for Moline as well as Devin Struble. Moline this year, a lot of new faces that you're going to see that you didn't see last year as Moline lost a bunch of their, a bulk of their offense. We talked about this uh, Wednesday night at the Rock Island Richwoods game, and that game was a good showing by one big six team, Rock Island. And Moline, they got their first one of the season the other day, and they're looking to get things rolling under this new coach. Yeah, new head coach, and they lost a core group of seniors last year. It'll be interesting how to see how they bounce back this year and come together as a team. Two shots there, one by a nice rebound there by Logan off the mark, and, and another rebound by Moline. East Peoria's cannot get boards right now as they are struggling to find rebounds as open shots. Wood missed one, rebound grab, and here's a chance in the corner for Struble. No good, rebound grab there by Slusher. Moline had chance after chance, and a ball almost stolen away. Up the floor now, here's Hol or, uh, Mulhern. But yeah, Moline, first year head coach, Jeff Schimmel, after they lost uh, Coach Ryan Weber. And there's a pass picked off there by uh, Jed Wood, and Wood holds it back, kicks to Owens. Owens with a nice pass to Logan. Logan into the corner for Struble. Back to Owens. Another nice pass there for Logan. Puts a shot up. Banks it in. High off the glass for the big man. And he's got his first points and only up by five. That's just a good job of finding the big man in the middle. And look to get a little couple of shots falling here. So far, uh, hasn't been much luck either way on the shots. Three and a half, to, just about th under three and a half to go. First quarter as checking in now is uh, number 15, Brent Krim, as well as... Uh, number f trying to get. I thought there was a second guy that checked in for East Peoria, but not sure. As number five, uh, Sean Hanley from Moline checks in. Working it around now, near side. That's Krim. Krim for East Peoria. Shot from the baseline up. No good. Nice rebound there by Mulhorn, but they're going to call him for over the back. Over the back there on Mulhorn, going the other way. As uh, now, uh, a one-two-one-one full court pressure. It seems like from uh, East Peoria, as they're going to want to try to make Moline make a mistake. Hanley now trying to get it across half court, gets it to Struble near side. As long as they get back on that full court press, and it could work out pretty well for them. Yeah, and, and Moline's not a team that's going to push the pace as much as, I mean, not as much as they did last year. When I mean, but yet when you got a guy like Anthony Lindauer who can do as much as he can with the ball that they lost last year, then you're not going to be able to do as much as with your offense. But it'll be nice to see a Moline improve over the season and see what they can do. Here's Hanley thought about three, didn't pull it. Up top for Wood. Wood is 4 three shot, fourth, fourth three-pointer of the game. He hits his second, so he's two for four from three-point land. His second of the game, he's got six, and it's 10 to two in favor of Moline. And that was just a case of nice ball work around the perimeter there for the Maroons as they find the open man for three. Working the ball around now. Back up top here's Mulhorn. Shot from three there, off the mark. Oh, bad shot by Buckley. And now coming back the other way, here comes Hanley. Moline, and like we said, Moline's not going to be the biggest, not going to push the pace on offense as much as they're going to try to make you go fast pace on defense. 
with offense, they're going to want to do this. They're going to want to work the ball around and find the open shot. As they work it around here, Struble lost or almost had an errant pass there, and it's back down to the near side wing for Struble. Up top, here's Wood. Wood again from three. Bang! Wood again for three. His third of the game, and it's nine for him, and it's 13 to two in favor of Moline. Wood's found the range early here. As he said his third three, and the Maroons are going to press a little themselves as East Peoria brings it back the other way. Here's a shot in the corner from three. Got rattled at home by Mitch Nem. As Nem hits his three and it's down to 13 to five with 120 or 110 to go, excuse me, in this first quarter. Hanley waiting for something to happen. As ball worked around Struble back up top. As they work it around, nice little skip pass for Hanley. Hanley from the corner for three. No good. Rebound grab there by Nem. Trying to push it, and Hanley almost stole it. And ball on the ground. He picks it up. Timeout called by the junior. Good play there by the 5'9 junior guard to get the steal and call a timeout. And Molino will keep the possession. Yeah, and uh, that was just a nice hustle play there to get the ball back for the Maroons. And we'll see now if they can work the ball to the middle a little bit. It's been all threes early for the Maroons. And see if they could really get it down low and get some fouls, draw some fouls, get to the line, or just lay it in there. Just under 40, just about 49 seconds to go, first quarter. 13 to five is the score. I want to thank everybody listening in and hope everyone had a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Again, I'm Joe Inko, alongside of me, Tanner Rowe, as uh, we are uh, getting things going. And I guess we could point out that uh, UT is arriving here in the building. They're, uh, they come up next as they play uh, Chicago Inglewood, the team that Moline beat on a last second shot. They play them next after this game at 11.30. Hope that you guys can uh, join in for all the action here today at the Galesburg Holiday Tournament. The bowling gets the ball back in. 47 seconds left here in the first quarter. They are up by eight. And Drew Owens with the ball. Nice skip pass to new guy, or newcomer to Carlos Flores, a transfer from, from uh, Davenport North. And his role on this team is not going to be as big as it would have been at North, but... He will be a key player as DeCarlos coming off the bench. Yeah, Flores definitely could be an impact player for the Maroons this year. And oh, and a nice steal there by Krim, but it all goes out of bounds. And uh, Anyway, Tanner, you were saying about DeCarlos. He is a hustler and good ball player, honestly. Uh, the Maroons might have found themselves a good player off their bench or possibly a starter down the road. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, you're very right. He could be a starter down the road for them. And uh, he played a key role at North last year. Uh, North not that not as good uh, eventually through the season as they had a rough time in that MAC conference. Nice pass there by Hanley, but it got stolen away. Good look trying to find the open man down low. Up the floor now here's Krim looking for the last shot. There's Scully now back over to Krim. Krim for three. No good. Rebound grab there by Owens. Last second heave will not count as he almost almost got it to go, but shot wouldn't have counted anyway. We are one quarter in the books here at the Thanksgiving, the Galesburg Thanksgiving Tournament. I'm Joe Wink alongside of me, Tanner. I want to thank everybody for listening. We are through one quarter of play here in game number one on the day. Moline leads East Peoria 13 to five. Leading the way uh, for Moline is Wood with six. Or Wood with nine, excuse me. He had three, th he had three three-pointers in that first quarter. And uh, if Moline, you're going to probably want to try to give the ball back to that hot hand in the second quarter. Right, you want to find him out there, obviously, if he's hitting early. And for East Peoria, it's kind of been a sluggish start for him. I don't know if it's an early morning or what, but not much offense worked around for them. And they're going to try to get that fixed as well as the Moline Maroons have really shut it down on defense in the first quarter. They, uh... East Peoria will get the ball to start this quarter. What are you going to want to, if you're East Peoria, what do you want to do on this first possession of the quarter? Well, Try of course, to you want to get some good ball work. And it's been all jumpers early. Hopefully, you can find something down low and maybe find your way at the yeah. line here in the second quarter. Or and if just you get something going if you're East Peoria on if you offense. Look, and if you look at this roster, they're not very d deep height wise. Their tallest guy is 6'5, but he hasn't, I don't believe he's played yet. Um. I shouldn't say that. He's out on the floor right now, but now as they work it around, East Peoria with the ball, trying to get something going. 
up top, that's Scully. Works it around Krim near side. Moline with the stretched 1 2 2 zone off. Look, they're going to just keep throwing at him all game. And they don't come out of that, so Moline's going to keep that up as much as they can. And so far, it's worked for him to perfection. We're getting it around now. Near side, back top, up top to, to Slusher. Now they get into the paint. Nice look. Nice pass there. Off, off the mark. Rebound trying to get it out. He does. Now as they work it around in the lane. Back up top now. As there's that 6'5 guy we were talking about in Sommer. Nice ball movement here by East Peoria. But a traveling violation there is another good possession. Gone to waste by a turnover. They had a couple good shots, but they just couldn't get him to fall. Yeah, and you can't. You just can't. Keep committing these unforced turnovers, and that's exactly what they've done early here. And see if they can get the mental mistake shaken off. Wood for three again, and he hits it. And Wood has 12 points, all on threes. His fourth of the game, he is four for six from the three-point land. And Jed Wood has the hot hand right now for Moline. Yeah, I know the Raiders are going to want to find him out there. They're not going to let him get keep getting those threes up. If they do, it could be deadly. Ball knocked away off of Moline Maroon and stays with East Peoria, so it'll stay down there. East Peoria trying to get things going. Wood almost stole it away. Tried to throw it off of Scully, or excuse me, Slusher. Checking back in is Sean Mulhorn. He's coming in for Bennett, K Bennett Krim. East Peoria now trying to get the ball in. They do, almost knocked away and Ball on the ground to Carlos Flores, comes up with it. Layup chance, count it! And the foul into Carlos Flores. We were just talking about him earlier. Could be a huge factor off the bench. And Flores, with a beautiful steal on the inbound, picks the ball off the ground and has a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, it was just a nice steal by Flores. Heads up play, and then he goes with the nice up and under for the and one. Flores with the free throw up and good. And it is a... 13, 14 point game, largest of the game for Moline. East Peoria's got to get some shots inside and they're taking too many jump shots right now. Here's a nice little pass down low to Sommer. Working it back around, here's Mulhern. East Peoria working it around. Nice little skip pass there for Scully. Inside ball knocked away and stolen again by Moline. And if Moline can come up with a few more defensive possessions like that, they can really put East Peoria in a tough spot. Already yeah, digging themselves a little hole as it's 21 to 5. Yeah, Derek Stabler with a, uh, or excuse me, Josh Larson there on the, or that was Stabler, excuse me, on the receiving end there of a pass from Larson. Ball knocked out of bounds, going the other way. 21 to 5 is the score. I don't know if East Peoria is going to find it from their bench or what, but they really need an offensive spark here early. And uh, Galesburg beat, East, beat up on East Peoria the other night too, so Moline trying to do the same as well. As checked in is number 21, Vashawn Newman for the Moline Maroons. Is Moline getting pretty deep into their bench in this one so far? Last year was something you probably didn't see as much for Moline as they w didn't utilize their bench as much. And here's Flores up top for three. Off the mark, rebound or out of bounds, and back the other way. Yeah, last year you really wouldn't see them run this many guys off their bench, but so far they've done it well, and everyone's producing. Yeah, everyone is, everyone's done something good so far for Moline, and tell you that. And now, right now, here is Slusher as he steps out of bounds, and another unforced turnover. Yeah, those are really just going to hurt you. You can't keep affording to have unforced turnovers throughout the whole game. It's really going to come down to just playing a better game for East Peoria. Here we go at 5.25 to go second quarter. We're getting around. Here's a shot from three by Newman. Off the mark. Rebound grab there by Krim. Again, East Peoria trying to get something going. Five minutes to go second quarter. Working around now, here's Mulhern. Mulhern gets it into the corner, drives baseline, and he stepped, I want to say he stepped out of bounds, or they're going to they say it was a foul. They're going to call a foul there. Foul is on Tanner Logan. His first. Team's first also. I'm sure the Marines head coach has to be pleased that their first foul comes with five minutes left in the second quarter. And an 
Another turnover off the inbound by East Peoria. That's got to be about the eighth turnover they've committed in this game so far. And for the as for the fouls, the Moline Maroons really haven't had the chance to commit any fouls. Yeah, they've been yeah, because usually before that they get they turn it or they commit a turnover or they force a turnover, excuse me. Here's Owens just gonna pull up a three, no good, rebound. Nice rebound grab there by Feist. Owens drives the lane, puts up a shot, no lost handle of it, no good. Rebound on the ground. Picked up there by Mitch Nem. Up the Maroons are doing a real good job of finding the 50-50 balls and the rebounds, but East Peoria almost just lost another one out of bounds. Yeah, they, yeah, I saw they almost lost that one. There's bad pass. Nice uh, way to regather by Krim. Here's Mulhern in the lane. Puts up a shot. No good. Rebound grab there. Kick back out. There's open shots there. You got to take them, man. You can't be hesitant to shoot the ball into yeah, the corner. You really got to get started somewhere. If there's an open shot, maybe you start knocking those down. You just... You gotta an, really see. It's an eight nothing run right now for Moline. Knocked out of bounds, or a foul is gonna be committed there. You, uh, it's an eight nothing run for Moline. And still, East Peoria has yet to score in this quarter and we're four, we're four minutes into it, so. I thought that was a shooting foul there, but it must have came before the, the ball went up. 3.58 to go, second quarter. Score is 21 to 5, and East Peoria just wants to get something. Learning experience right now is here's a shot from Krim for three. Got it. That'll, I mean, you, you want to ask for anything, and that's something, so. Yeah, and all you can do is just find the open shots and just keep taking them. That's really all you need to do to hopefully get back into this game a little bit if you're East Peoria. Exact, that's exactly what they're going to try to do, and now back into the corner is Wood. It'll be interesting to see if Wood takes another three. He's four of six right now for three. Wood wide open. Why make him wide open as he bangs home another one? And Wood's five for seven from three. 15 points leads all scorers. And it's almost like the Raiders aren't even finding him out there. They're just kind of forgetting about him, and he's roaming the, the perimeter, and he's getting the shots that he wants for sure. Travel there by the junior Mulhern. And you're right. I mean, we saw in that possession they were working it around, and Owens drives, kicks, and this Moline team makes some outstanding no look passes. And right, and here's a oh, wide open down the floor, no good rebound there, knocked away from Logan as Larson couldn't knock it home. You can blame the Knights defense, but really the Maroons just work it around so well that they do a good job of getting um, wood open. Working around now as they kick it into the corner. Shot from three is up for number 30. That's Michigan M, and he knocks it home, and it's back down to 13. They've scored more points in this quarter than they did in the first. As it's six for them in the quarter now, and here's Wood. Wood pulls up for three again. No good rebound grab there by Krim, and a charge called. Well, he came barreling down on the defender there. He put his elbow out, and... A lot of times you're going to get that call. They call the charge. I don't know what do you, what do you think about that right there. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not exactly sure if Owens was set or not, but I get what you're saying where Nem or Krim just lowered the boom right there as he put up the hit stick basically on the defender there. Yeah, I think that it's a call that has to be made because you really just can't push the defender around. Whew. Of course he wasn't set, but uh yeah. Either way, he definitely got thrown to the ground there. Ooh, that was close to an over and back right there. And as Wood missed a three in the far side corner, he's four and nine or five and nine now. And here's Owens, three on one chance. Here's Wood wide open for the land, no good. Rebound. Put back it in, but foul on the play. That's the first two that Woods attempted all game. Won't count because of the foul. Well, we'll see if his three-point shooting can translate to the free throw line here. Foul is on number 10. Sean Mulhorn, his first. Or his second, excuse me. Team fourth. As we have a miscommunication. Yeah, malfunction at the junction, I'll tell you that, between the refs. Maybe the refs slept in a little too early, too late today. 
I'm I'm assuming that they missed or I'm get, they're saying that Mulhern was not back on the play. As uh, Slusher and Buckley come in as he hit as Wood hit the first and the second. Logan checks back in for Moline, and now they're going to pick up full court pressure here on a 1 2 2 press. And so far it's worked, but East Peoria has a man back now. Yeah, as they got a guy trying to pick out. Now they work they work that man that was deep in Sommer. Nothing going though, as they just kick it back out to the top. And East Peoria did a real good job there. What you really need to do against the press is just run on it and see if they can beat you back down court. Here's a shot from Melhern rolls out as Logan grabs the rebound. Up the floor now, here's Owens. Owens finds, try, looked for Josh Larson down low, but Larson lost handle of it and it goes out of bounds. 141 to go, second quarter, 26-11 lead for Moline. Vice checks back in now for Larson. So far, Moline's looking impressive. What do you like about this Moline team so far as we're almost through the first half? Well, they get out and they set a really, really controlled tempo. They pass the ball around and they're gonna come out and get you on defense as well. They're not gonna give you anything easy, that's for sure. Here's Sommer, three for East Peoria, no good. Rebound grabbed there by Slusher. Also, the Maroons hustle to the ball real well, and that's really an advantage for them. Yeah, they close down these open spaces. They leave in the zone really fast, and Mohorn with a nice little floater. He gets the fall away. Shot, they go there. Cuts it down to 13 as Moline's doubled them up right now, up by 13, 26 to 13. One minute to go, second quarter. Owens near side, little kick back up to Vice. Moline works the ball around pretty good, very good on offense with nice crisp passes. And then on defense, they can shut down these open spaces real well. As here's Logan in the lane, banks it in, and it's back up by seven, by 15. And it'll be interesting to see throughout this year, like, when Moline gets into the big six play and they're playing a team like Rocky who likes to run a fast pace offense and really set the tempo up high and Moline likes to slow it down a little bit. And it'll be interesting to see how those two teams match up. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get a gate we'll get a chance to call those games and Big Six action right around the corner. Seven days away from the first big six game of the season. Nice Buckley tried to stuff it in and he got fouled, so he'll go to the line and shoot two. Seven days away from the opening night in Western Big Six play. Next week, Rock, Rock Island will play at Allman to start their season. Moline will play at home against Galesburg. And Quincy comes to UT to play the Panthers at the Panther Den to open the Big Six season there as well. First free throw from Buckley is off the back of the iron. Off the back of the iron again, and no good. Flores checks back in as well as... As well as Stabler for Moline. Second free throw from Carson Buckley is good. Thompson checks back in now for uh, Buckley. As East Peoria now is going to want to get a full court pressure going and see if they can get a. They're just see if they can ch uh, chop down the lead here a little bit before the quarter ends. And now the... Moline will hold for the last shot, yeah. Right. You got to think something. They're going to look for a three, maybe, as they got Wood running the baseline. They kick it into Vice. Vice turn around and pulls. No good. Rebound. Knocked out of bounds by uh, Crib, and that's how the quarter is going to end. Tanner, real quick, what are your thoughts on that first half of play? Well, Moline really got out there and played their own game. They slowed things down and really forced a lot of turnovers, but East Peoria also forced turnovers on themselves, and that's really going to be needed change in the second half, and Peoria needs to come out and possess the ball a little bit, make their shots fall down, and hopefully things will go better for them in the second half. Well, you got a good point there, and I mean, East Peoria just needs to cut down turnovers on themselves, and... They need to start looking at these open shots. When they get rebounds in the paint, they got to start putting shots back up, see what they can make. Down by 14 at the half. Moline leads 28 to 14. And we will come back at the second half for the set for a second half action of this Galesburg Holiday Tournament. We will see you here in a little bit. This is a production of FTP Sports. Hello, ladies and gentlemen.
and gentlemen, welcome back. Joe Winkle, all excited of me is Tanner Rowe, and we are getting things underway. Second half of the Moline East Peoria game here at the Galesburg Thanksgiving Tournament. Another little fast-paced start to action as uh, Vice in the lane rolls it in, and it's 30-14. to 14 and Tanner, what are you expecting here as we start the second half of action? Well, uh, East Peoria is down 16 now, and it's not over, though, by any means, of course. It's a game of runs, and... But really, they need to get some offense working here, and really, they miss a lot of shots in the first half, but that could change easily for East Peoria. And for Moline, they just need to keep playing their game, honestly. I mean, it worked for them in the first half. They forced turnovers and hustled to the ball, so they just need to keep that up. As a three nailed there by uh, Mulhern, and right stuff like that right there. You miss the shot, you run it, you run down your own miss, you feel force a turnover, and you come up and you make your own shot opportunity. And here's Wood in the corner, passes up a three. I'm surprised he passed up the open three. Vice down in the paint, kicked over to Larson. No good, rebound there by, uh, knocked around by, trying to get a number here. That was Stabler. And the thing is, for East Peoria, you dug yourself a little hole in the first half, so you really have to play mistake-free basketball here in the second half to get back into this game. You know, and there's a chance they could do it. They're going to try to make things interesting. Owens into the corner for Wood. Shot from three is up. Off the mark. Nice rebound there by Stabler. Foul called on Thompson. And, you know, hopefully, I mean, hopefully they make it interesting. And, I mean, I'm sure it'll be interesting throughout the game. See what happens here. And, again, early in the season, teams are just trying to build. Right. And, uh, but to see them make a little comeback here, they're going to have to get on the boards over Moline as... They've definitely won that battle early. Oh yeah, they won that battle dominating in the first half and like they need plays like we saw the first play they had. Um that gets in, that gets distracting after a while when they do that stomping stuff. <laughs> anyway, when the, the shots in the as uh, Stabler hits the second, it's 31-17. Two touchdown lead for Moline. Um like, anyway, the shot in the corner from uh, Mulhern earlier and then running down your own mist, creating a turnover, creating shot opportunities. They're going to need stuff like that as Moline now stretched out to a 1-3-1 one, one look. And they're just going to keep running these zone defenses to death. And you're really going to see here, uh, in, I'm, I believe in the second half, you're really going to start to see what we were talking about on how Moline fills open gaps quickly. Yeah, they get to where they need to be, and they know their assignments. They don't fall away from their men at all or really nice. let anything slip up. So nice take to the basket there by number 14, Carson Brockley. Yeah, that was a nice up and under move there for him to get the points. Because now Owens with the ball up top for Moline. Owens now kicks it near Sidewoods. Moline going right to left. Left to right, East Peoria. Into the paint there is Vice, and he banks it in as the big man got gets his second basket of the half. Up the floor now, here comes Mulhern. And you're sort of starting to see here where uh, lack of size is hurting East Peoria. Yeah. Moline's just finding their way down low now in the second half early. Nice skip pass there, here's Mulhern. Mulhern in the paint, kicked out to Scully. Shot from three is no good. Or excuse me, that was Slusher. Rebound grab there by Larson, and up the floor now comes Moline. Owens brings it across half court. Nice little look there. Kick, I was about to say, I thought they weren't going to call it, but that was yeah. a kick. It almost went uncalled there, but they got the whistle, and it'll stay with the Maroons. Again, Joe Winkle alongside of me, Tanner Rowe. I want to thank everybody that's joining in right now. Hope everybody had a uh, happy Thanksgiving. I know at this end, uh, I'm sure Tanner did. I know I did, so <laughs> it was a very good day yesterday. And here's Wood in the near side corner. Glad to get back to uh, basketball here. And, uh, Owens up top. Shot from three is on the way. No good. Rebound. Tipped and grabbed by Slusher. I noticed that uh, East Peoria put in their biggest body that they have. Hopefully create a little presence down there in the paint off the bench now. Yeah, as a... Uh, Sommer got a little bit of action in that quarter, but I think what they start need to start doing, especially against this 1-3-1 one, one, one defense, and you never see it, but I, I, you would think that they would try to work the opposite block on, or try to get below on that one-on-one -on -one matchup. You know what I'm saying? On that 1-3-1 one, one defense, on the back side, the black side, the back side block is always open. Right, and if you get numbers down there, you can have a heyday, really. 
And I mean, I don't know if we'll see it here, but when you get it, when you start playing good enough teams against the 1-3-1, they could start throwing lob passes. Then there's a shot from uh, Carson Buckley for three, and he bangs it home. And they cut the lead to 11, and it started out 14. The biggest lead was 17, and it's down to 11 here early in the second half. And this is all you can do if you're East Peoria, just keep cutting and cutting at that lead, and hopefully the fourth quarter rolls around and you're in good shape to get back into the game. Moline with some nice cross-court passes here, and here's Larson, throws it up a shot, puts it in. Moline back up 15, or 13, excuse me. Here's Mulhern getting it across half court. Almost lost the ball. Nice recovery there. As pass knocked away and stolen by Owens, and Owens brings it up court. Owens has numbers. Owens gets it to Logan. Logan puts up a shot blocked there by Buckley. Foul called. That's going to be his first. Team second of the third quarter, of the, of the half, excuse me. That last offensive possession for the Raiders was what we saw in the first half, just throwing the ball around poorly there. and Now it hurts them on the other end as they're starting to make a little run. First shot by Logan from the line is good. Again, next game coming up is uh, Chicago Inglewood against United Township. Very excited to see UT's uh, first time we'll be able to see him for, on the season as the second one nailed there by Logan. Yeah, it's a young Panthers team and uh, it'll be interesting to see what they can do here early in the season at this tournament. Working the ball around now is back up floor. Here comes East Peoria. Sommer with a nice little pass there to Nem. Can't hit it. Rebound there by Buckley. Buckley puts up the shot. Thought he got fouled there. No call. Sommer with a head fake. Pulls up from two. No good. Rebound there. On the line. I, was, I thought he wasn't going to call it, but on the line was Larson. And out of bounds. Carson Buckley showing a lot of hustle down there to get the ball back two times. He kept the ball in his team's hands, and nice to see him get some points out of it here. Yeah, Buckley has five and a half. 37-22 is the score. Three minutes left. Third quarter. East Peoria trying to chop down this lead some more. Here's Buckley far side corner. Looking for something to happen. Far side wing now. Here's Nem. Near side now. That's uh, Mulhern. Guarded, face guarded by Owens. Nice little head fake there. As Sommer drives the lane. Reverse layup. No good. Fouled on the attempt. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And as we all, uh, we never got the chance to say it the other night, but I mean, you'll, I'm sure you'll agree with me here by saying the best way to come back down by uh, uh, deficit is with the clock stopped and on the free throw line. Right, and Sommer did a good job there to get into the paint and draw the foul, and now they're at the line where they need to execute. Sommer hits the first. And also, if you're East Peoria, what you don't want to do is get out of your game. You really, if you get down, you really just want to keep playing your game and Get things going, especially early in the season. You want to see what you have. Some 2-1-2 two, two pressure now by East Peoria. Sommer hit both free throws. Now let's see if they can create a turnover, and they do. So it's a 13-point game, and East Peoria creating a turnover there. That's exactly what they wanted to do there with that pressure, and it works to perfection for them as Moline just throws the ball down court blindly. Now working around, here's uh, Krim. Far side, Buckley. Trying to get something going, and it's nice steal there by Hanley. Hanley fouled there by Buckley, and the, not a smart play there by Buckley as he lost the ball and basically in upset it himself, commits the foul. I'm surprised the Raiders just didn't try to get back to the paint there. That's really what you want to do. And I'm sure head coach Matt Wright will stress that to him in their next time out. So 2.15 to go second or third quarter. 13 point game. We're going to the ball around now. Far side skip pass there, Hanley. Now down to Struble. Struble almost lost it. Now as they work it back up top. Far side Owens. Owens waiting for something to happen. Owens far side now Stabler back to Owens. <laughs> Owens now works it for Hanley. 150 to go third quarter. 
Nice pass into the paint, but Logan didn't get over there in time. And now back up the floor, here comes Gale, or almost said Galesburg, here comes East Peoria. Shot in the corner for three by Nap. got it! And it's down to 10, and they're still chopping away at this lead. Every point matters here as they knock it down. Here's Logan now down low for Moline. Shot up, foul on the attempt, no good. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And definitely a good job out of the locker room by East Peoria to play a different game. And they're just slowly getting back into this game. And Moline's kind of out of their rhythm right now. Let's see if they can pick it back up. East Peoria has won the third quarter so far. They are 13-9 uh, to nine as Logan airballs the first free throw. And Flores and Wood come back into the game. <laughs> to Carlos Flores and Jed Wood checking back in now. Back at the line, Logan for the second free throw. And sometimes when you have a lead, you just need to bring guys off your bench, stay fresh out there, and they'll help you maintain that lead out there. Nice. Oh, man, and there was a, another great golden opportunity for East Peoria that just blows right by them. And they, Logan missed both free throws. They had a chance to cut it to single digits for the first time since the first quarter. And they turned the ball over, and that's yeah. pretty much been the story of the game. Chance to cut it to eight right there with still a minute and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Would have been huge for East Peoria, but they just keep up this tough defense. They'll find ways to get it done. Owens now up top, 110 to go in the quarter. Owens with a nice little pass to Wood. Another skip pass there is Owens with a head fake pass to get his guy open. Into the corner, now back to Owens. And the thing about the Maroons is you don't want them to get a lead on you because they can just work the ball around so well and just kill the clock. Working around as far as the paint gets it to go. And is there back up now by? And that's five 13. points off the bench for Flores as he's the guy we were wanting to see here. Now drives in, Buckley kicks it back out. Krim in the lane with a shot in the paint, no good. Rebound grab by Krim. Krim pulls it back out, trying to work their offense. You would like to see them on those opportunities put the ball back up, don't you think? Yeah, definitely go straight back up, maybe draw a foul, but. Either way, they're giving themselves a chance here. 12-point lead at the moment, as they probably take the last shot with only 10 seconds left. As they work into the corner, ball knocked out of bounds, and nice catch there by uh, Kai standing outside. So now they have three seconds to get a shot off, and obviously it should be plenty of time. Let's just see if they get the open shot. And you want to think they're going to look for a big momentum swinging three here to end the half. And if they hit a shot to end the half or end the quarter, it'd be a huge as ball knocked out of bounds. So that knocks a second off the clock almost. Yeah, they could start the fourth quarter with down nine, and that would really help them out a lot. But especially after the halftime deficit. Trying to get a guy open. They do in the paint. Nothing's going to go for him there as Wood chucks up a shot. No, going to fall. So we are through three quarters of play here at the game one of the Friday edition of the Galesburg Thanksgiving Tournament. Moline leads East Peoria 39 to 27. So we're through three quarters and Tanner. Through this game, if you had to pick uh, one guy for our uh, prime performer so far, who would it have to be? Well, I'd have to go with Jed Wood with 17 points to this to this point, and the three ball's definitely been falling for him early. Yeah, he's a uh, five of nine from the field for three from three point range, and he had a three point play later or a two point or he hit two free throws later. He's got 17, leading all scores, leading scoring for uh, East Peoria is Mitch Gnem. <laughs> Again, we got later games coming up. The game after this, we will be uh, have uh, we will have. Let's try to get through the schedule. As uh, Englewood plays United Township next at 11:30. After that, uh, Galesburg will play. The uh, Englewood Chicago Englewood Eagles play the United Township Panthers. That game coming up next. But we got one more quarter of action. Eight minutes left here as Moline and East Peoria play. And East Peoria is going to get the ball to start this quarter. So they got a chance again to knock it down to single figures. Yeah, they can knock it down to single figures. But uh, 
They're going to need to find the hoop here, though, in the fourth quarter. That's going to be critical if they want to get back into this game. As we got started in the start of the fourth quarter, East Peoria at the ball. Nice little pass there. Sommer drives the lane. Blocked there by Stabler. No call, though, as it goes out of bounds. And even though Sommer got blocked there, it's a good job finding the lane, and it's exactly what you want to do to start off this fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's something they really haven't done is attack the hoop all game, really. And neither team, honestly, has done that as much, but neither one of these teams is a uh, basic dribble-drive team like you might see here later today. Looking for something to happen. There's a shot there by Mulhern. No good. Rebound grab there by Vice. Owens with the ball now for Moline. They've got numbers. Nice little lob pass. Trying to get it to Stabler. But he lost control of the ball and it goes out of bounds. Seven and a half to go third quarter. And once again, East Peoria will have a chance to cut it down to single digits. They've definitely had their chances. and Let's just see them execute now. Oh, and another turnover there by East Peoria. That's about the... 14th turnover they've had in this game, I want to say, around that area, and they just keep shooting themselves in the foot every time they get a chance to do something. Yeah, and if you just look at the game in general, you're not going to win it with that many turnovers, and unless they cut down and play some real tough defense here, it's going to be tough for them to fight back into this game with all these turnovers. Wood now to pass Owens, and Molina like to do this the rest of the game, honestly, and just pass the ball around and just and melt the clock. Can. Melt, yeah, they, the way they move the ball on offense, they can just just pass it around like this the rest of the quarter and foul going to be called. They're on the ground, so no shots. That is on number 15, Brent Bennett Krim, his second team fifth as coming out of the game is Nem for Buckley for East Peoria. Wood to inbound the ball from Olin. Nice little pass to Vice in the paint, banks it in, and they're back up by 13, or 14, excuse me. And Vice is just so much bigger than those other defenders. They found him right in the middle of the lane with his arms up, and he just gets the uncontested shot off the glass there. And they went to him a lot in the second half. He's got six, and now drive the lane is Mulher. and puts a shot up, won't fall, but he's got two shots at the line to get a to start chopping the lead down again and it would have been nice for him to see it go in. Yeah, East Peoria has missed a couple of those and one opportunities. It's just been one of those games for him, really. So Mulhern now at the line with a chance to get two. First shot for Mulhern is up and nothing but net. Second shot from Mulhern, trying to cut it down to 12 again, is with 6.31 left in the fourth quarter. Mulhern's shot is up and good. So they're going to pick up with this three-quarter court, uh, full-court pressure. And nice way by Moline to break it. And Vice easy play up down low. And that was beautiful there by Moline to get the, to break the pressure. Yeah, and a good job by Vice to hustle back down court and beat the defense for the easy layup. So now here's Krim. Knocked out of bounds there by Wood. Good defense there to block the pass. Six ten to go, fourth quarter. It is a forty-three to twenty-nine lead for uh, Moline. With the ball now, as they work it around, here's Thompson. Thompson now works it up top. Wait for something to happen. Five fifty, not just under six minutes to play here, fourth quarter. 14 point lead for Moline. Nice little pass there to Sommer. Sommer kicks it into the corner. Buckley for three. Got it. And now it's back down to 11. Good ball work there by East Peoria. And Sommer could have went up strong down there, but he instead decides to pass it out to the open man, and it works to perfection for him. And a pass. Wood tight ropes the baseline or the sideline and almost goes out of bounds. Nice, nice look there as uh, Wood stays in bounds and he hits Stabler for two. And Buckley with all nine points in his, for him in this uh, second half for East Peoria. Heads up play by Wood to stay in bounds. That could have been a huge momentum swing for East Peoria after coming off the three point play. Working it around now. Back in this 1 2 2 stretch out zone is Moline. And again, you're seeing how they can create, how they give space and they shut it down real fast. And now here's Krim. Looks for Sommer in the paint. Blocked away there by Stabler. 
And East Peoria is really getting frustrated down low as they haven't been able to find a good shot down there all day. Wood with the three goes out of bounds. Checking back in is uh, Ganem and Slusher. In for Krim and Thompson. Sommer going to get the ball in now to uh, Mulhern. And up floor, here comes East Peoria. And now with about 4.30 left in the game, this is really where, where you want to see East Peoria start to make their run if they're going to. Yeah, this is where they're going to need it in this last four and a half. Here's a chance for three from Slusher. No good. Rebound. Nice play there by Stabler. And Stabler's making them plays all day down low, and they're going to tee him up for complaining about He thought he got pushed down low. And Stabler's going to get it. Just as we're praising Stabler for his play down low, he gets te teed up. Yeah, and he's just jawing at the ref there. Now you knock these down and you get the ball back. and Maybe this could be a little momentum here for the Raiders. They're going to get two shots and the ball. And Mulhern from the line. Is up and good. First one's good, so that cuts it down to uh, 12. And they have a chance. If they get this, it would cut it to 11, and they have a chance to put it to single digits for the first time since the first quarter. You think this could easily be a five-point turnaround right here, and if anything, four at the, at the least. And Timeout called by Moline. Smart. I, I, I like that uh, timeout call there by Coach Schimmel to uh, regather his players. Yeah, that is a good timeout call there, right right there, coming off the technical and talk to his players. I'm sure he's going to stress the fact that they can milk the clock, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see a lot of that from the Maroons on their offensive possessions from here on out. Yeah, you're going to expect to see... You're going to expect to see them milk the clock on their next couple possessions uh, with four... 4.27 to go, fourth quarter, and it is a 45-34 lead. As for East Peoria, they're going to want to limit that as much as possible. They're going to need to find the ball, and if, if worse comes to worse, they're going to have to put the Maroons on the foul line. Yeah, and uh, a little too early to start do fouling, um, but you're right. If it gets down to it, then they're going to have to do that because if they give a chance, Moline could... Moline can milk a minute off the clock on each possession the way they pass the ball around. I've seen them do it, so really they could, and it's amazing how they can just work it around and uncontested almost. But. Yeah, and uh, teams really have a hard time of uh, guarding them, especially when they get to that chance. But now East Peoria is going to look for a little swing of points right here. Here's Mulhern. Let's see. I mean, usually when they had these opportunities in this game, they have turned the ball over. So we'll see what happens now. Here's a chance now for uh, Buckley. Works it around for Ganem. Back up top now. Here's Mulhern. He's pure and he's with a bucket here. Would cut it to single digits for the first time since the first quarter. Working around now. Here's Mulhern. Mulhern drives. Puts a shot. Wild shot up. No good there. And a over the back foul is going to be called on Sommer. I'm sure Mulhern there wasn't so much looking for the open shot as he was the foul, but good straight-up defense all day by the Maroons down there, and they haven't really drawn too many fouls. No, they've only committed four in this half, and they only committed about two in the first, so six all together in the game, so they have been done a real good job of uh, not committing fouls, and here's Moline. They're going to spread the floor out. And now they're going to just try to pass the ball around for as long as they can without taking a shot. Like we said, this is where you'll see them just milk the clock and hold on to their 11-point lead. And Drew Owens is going to do this but with no, no problem with Owens' mind just sitting out there with the ball and is tucked under his left arm. As East Peoria now starting to get in the face of the bowling players. See how they adjust here. Bounce pass near side. Owens with the ball, 3.17 to go. Hanley with it up top, standing around the half-court logo. As Moline's cut about 40 seconds off on one possession. Almost knocked away in. Mullern was trying to get it, was trying to get it a steal, and Owens is going to get fouled, and he'll go to the line. <laughs> Owens yet to, shockingly, Owens yet to score in this game. Yeah, and he'll find his way to the line here for what could be his first point of the night, really. And 
shocking the Maroons have found a way to get it done without Owen scoring, but I'm sure their head coach is definitely pleased with that, though. Yeah, and Jeff Schimmel, uh, first-year head coach at Moline, looking to find his new experience in the Big Six. Trying to put Moline at 2-0 and this year, and first front end of the 1-1 and is good. Again, we have the uh, Eaglewood Eagles. As weird as that sounds, or Englewood Eagles, excuse me, coming up next for the, against United Township. Should be a good game as uh, it will be the first time we see UT this year. Now working the ball around here is East Peoria's Ganem. Up top now, here's Slusher. Far side, Buckley. Shot from three is up. Got it. And Buckley again for three, and that cuts it to ten. Buckley has 12 in this, uh, 12 points all in this half. So he's had a he's had a really good showing in this game. Nice little pass there to Stabler, or from a uh, vice to Strubler or Struble, and he gets it in, and it's back to 12 with two and a half to go. And even though it's been sort of a one-sided game, East Peoria hasn't gone away at all. And Coach Wright sure is upset at the score, but he can't be disappointed in the way they've played. They've stayed in this game and given themselves a chance all day. As trying to steal there was Krim, and he's fouled. So they'll go to the line, one and one opportunity for Drew Owens. And Drew Owens, you know, last year they had Anthony Lindauer, who was automatic, who was probably the best free throw shooter in the big six. And now this year, Moline might have the, another guy that you can say is the best free throw, show, free throw shooter in the big six. Try saying that uh, ten times fast. Um, Always nice to have a guy you know goes up to the line and he's just going to knock him down. And Coaches feel real confident in guys like that down the stretch of games. And when you need to make free throws in tight situations, Drew Owens is more or less the guy that you can go to because Drew Owens usually don't, don't want to jinx him here. Because he hits both, I can say it now. He's usually all, always automatic from the line. Yeah, and he's 4 of 4 now in the last minute. And that might have sealed their fate for East Peoria. Here's Curb now. Waiting for something to happen near side wing. As Larson getting in his face, like can hear Deli's talking some smack there, trying to get him to do something. And here's a shot there by Huber, or excuse me, that's Muller, not Huber. Thinking of something entirely different. Anyway, two minutes to go, and there's a foul going to be called there. That's their fifth, and that's Owens' third foul. They're going to say that one was on the floor. Now Sommer with a chance to inbound the ball. Two to go, down by 14. They get it to Buckley. Buckley for three. No good. Rebound grab there by Owens. 150 to go, fourth quarter. 14-point lead. Moline just trying to seal up this win and move to 2-0 on the season and 2-0 in this tournament. And right here is really where you can see the Maroons just take chunks of time off the clock. And... This could really be an advantage for him coming down to Western Mississippi's play as a four shot goes up there. If they get the ball back and time to run more clock for the Maroons. Owens is fouled. So we'll get another chance to see him at the line as he's knocked down his last four. And Owens can go from uh, scoring no points to Really having not a bad day. Yeah, Owens has played good defensively, and that's what Drew Owens does. I mean, he might not score all the time, but he's going to be a point. He's their point guard. He's going to get out there, run the floor, run the offense, and then find open guys like he found Jed Wood in that first half. And uh, stuff like that will win you games, I'll tell you that. And I think for the Maroons this year, it could really be a case of different guys stepping up every night and coming to play. Owens can run a fluid offense and also play some good defense down there on the other end. So they could have a solid shot at the Western Big Six this year. Anyone could, honestly. Yeah, I mean the Big Six race is wide open. I mean, you want you like we were so we were talking about it earlier. You were thinking past Rock Island and Quincy. There might not be that much there, but I mean. One or two hiccup, one or two hiccups by anybody, especially one of those teams, and it could be a wide open race this season. It'll be exciting to watch. Here's a shot from the baseline from Krim, no good. Rebound grabbed there by Larson, and that should do it. And a timeout called by Moline. A quick, I want to say, a ho I'm gonna 30 second timeout, just to regather his team and.
as Moline is going to end up winning this game. They're up by 16 with 48 seconds to go, and they will advance to 2-0 on the season. <coughs> yeah, and the Moline Maroons have to feel real good here under a new head coach starting out 2-0. and and Maybe they pick up another one later today and next week go into Western Week 6 play and just get things rolling from there. They're going to play Galesburg, who uh, looked t uh, looked tough against this East Peoria team the other day. So, Galesburg, just like United Township, uh, a team that's still rebuilding. They lost a lot a couple years ago. Um, two, last year they were playing in the first season without the leading one of the leading scorers in the Big Six, uh, when uh, Brandon Thompson, and that. That kid from Galesburg two years ago was more or less the most underrated player in the Big Six, if you think about it. They lost him. They lost a lot of guys and didn't have the best season ever last year. But, I mean, they have started out strong against the East Peoria team the other night. And they play later against Dyer. Looking to get points down low in the paint. And a foul going to be called there as Moline got some of their uh, guys that don't get much time in. And it's always good for a coach to see what he can find off the bench, get a guy in there who doesn't get much time, and just see what he can provide for the team. Requet at the line. He's going to have two shots. His first one up and rolls in. <laughs> always nice, I guess, to have that uh, nice touch off the bench. Second shot is up and good. So that pushes their lead up to 18. With 25 seconds left. And East Peoria held on for so long, but now the Maroons just pull away down the stretch. and That's what a good ball team will do to you, really. Just pull away down the stretch. Here's a shot up by Burtis. Got it. Nice play there by a kid, that does, a sophomore, that will probably have a lot of experience for this EP team here later in the future. With three seconds, Flores just going to run out the clock. And Moline is going to win, and they're going to advance to 2-0 on the season. Leading score in our player of the game is going to go to Jed Wood, who had an outstanding first half. Didn't have much in the second half, but you know his points in the first half uh, gave this team the key to the, uh, keys to victory throughout the game. Yeah, Wood's points in the first half really set the tempo of this game. Got the Maroons out to an early lead, and from there on out, they never looked back. So coming up next, United Township against Inglewood. The Eagles and the Panthers are going to get things going in our second contest of the night. Uh, Coach Mark Polite looking to get his team going after their uh, tough first loss opening night against Bartonville Limestone. Um, Limestone we will see later today. 